Well, that's the problem, uh, uh, what they say about women, that they can only think about one thing at a time. I thought it? that was men. That was men. <laughs> okay, well, actually we are being very politically correct here because we're going to talk about le at least uh, two. At least two women. Women painters. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, to me it was a shock to see Bosnanska, Olga Bosnanska. And the extreme painterliness uh, of what she does, um, and it's it, it's very reminiscent of um, early Edvard Munch. Yes, it is. Um, now, Olga Bosnanska is also it's a painter, a female painter that I didn't really know about her until I, I came to to the Nerdroom School actually. So yeah, it was uh, Old Nerdroom who introduced me to me, this uh, well, painter. Me as well. yeah, yeah. Um, and I was just very surprised that I've never heard of this painter before because it's just amazing, yeah. um, especially at the best. Like she has a very, quite large production. Um, it's very hard to get books on her as well, so that's mm. a bit disappointing. So if yeah. anyone has a book. I mean, she was, <laughs> I don't know her biography, but it, it seems to me that she was mainly doing portraits, like basically society portraits. Yes, yes, she was. Um, I think that's her big success was with the portraits, yeah. and that's what she was recognized. Yeah. For like her portrait. Yeah, because painting. I haven't, haven't seen any like compositions or any kind of narrative uh, attempts. Uh, I'm not with sure her. if she really tried it, but I think maybe she did. Um, her contemporary Helen Schaffbeck, uh, she was actually going quite a lot into more historical paintings um, mm. at um, the beginning of her career, but then moving more over to portraits. And I think because back then it was hard enough for a woman to become a painter, um, these women actually got to study um, Busnanska. Um, she studied with various, various artists and um, was supported by several who, who took, like male painters that took care of her and yeah. taught her painting. Um, and Schelfbeck as well, she was actually had um, a patron, a painter, who, who paid yeah. her tuition. But well, that's a um, fantastic thing about the whole bourgeois period. Mm -hmm. I mean, that <clears throat> you're going, uh, well, actually, when, when was Bosnowska born? Because uh, uh, Monk was born in 1863. It's very Actually, close to, to Monk. It, it's yeah. around the 60s as well. I don't remember exactly yeah. the, the date, but yeah. they're both very, very close in age and they'd live yeah. um, basically at the same time in a few years. I think she dies maybe in 46 while well, he dies in 44. I'm not, I can't remember exactly yeah, the date, yeah, so right. don't trust me on this, but no, no. <laughs> it's no, about that time. No, I was just thinking about, I was speaking on patrons, that that, that was sort of the, the, that bourgeois period mm -hmm. where, you know, with Hartwig also, mm -hmm. uh, you had. Uh, some, you know, dealing with business, some kind of business, yes. saying, okay, I want to support my my uh, community mm -hmm. and do something for culture and blah, blah, blah. And then you yes. get that. People but, sent down to, to educate themselves in an ethnic mm -hmm. academy or whatever. Yes. Um, but but it's, um, um, the striking thing is, it's, it's, um, it's something I also talked with uh, Nick Thurman about. This thing about this, that striking similarity between uh, painters that reach that highest mm. level. Yes, this. And and that's that sort of dissolved technique. And of course, uh, this is where we have to say no. This doesn't mean that she, she was becoming abstract mm -hmm. or she was pre-abstract yes. because the whole idea is, of course. And I I guess Vasari talks about that right uh, in in the lives of the mm -hmm. most excellent painters, sculptors, and architects. How that way of, of sort of dissolving form, form mm. the, the technica macchia, mm -hmm. is more, a, a more, um, makes it more living, basically. Yes, yeah. but that's how our eye works too. So yeah. um, as human beings, when we look around, you can't really focus on everything at the same time. Yeah. We, I now just focus on you and everything that's around you, even though it, it's quite dark anyway, but yeah. um, it all dissolves. It's all just this fussy things in the background. I yeah. can't really see it. And if I then is going to look at the wall behind you, then your face will not be sharp anymore. Yeah. And also in your face, I can't focus on everything at the same time. Looking into your eyes, I can't see your mouth clearly. Yeah. So that's like the whole, whole way, like how our eye work. Um, and I think when you start painting or drawing, you kind of look at everything with the same intensity. Mm. Um, and everything is sharp, everything is carved out, and you're so concerned about getting it right. And then um, <laughs> by getting it yeah. too right, you, kind of, you kill whatever you're painting, I think. It's, life goes away because it becomes too stiff, yeah. if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 um, well, when you get more, um, when you get better and you get a bigger understanding and you realize that you, you shouldn't put emphasis on what you really don't need, 
then you start to dissolve it. So, and I think that's very typical of all painters that you go from this very sharp, stiff style into this, or not everyone, but the best yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> if only everyone could do this, it would be great. So but, that's just how you do it. Just go start there and end up there. One, but, two, three, four, you know, yeah. the steps. But yeah, so I think the paintings that we keep looking at, keep going back to, that's the ones that they feel alive. Mm. And I don't think you can mm. truly get something alive by having that sharpness. That, 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 I remember that was a funny moment in um, uh, The Hunt of Odnodrum. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, of course, these clips were put out on, on Facebook. Uh, and there's this scene where Oda and I are looking at The Sick Child by Edward Munch. Mm -hmm. And then I say, OK, let's do the squint test. And if you squint at The Sick Child, everything gets so concentrated. It's like you sort of add solidity of form mm -hmm. as, you, as you squint yes. on it. And then you look at another, uh, which is called the uh, same type of motif, death in the, I guess the English title is death in the, well, literally death in the sick, sick, sick room. Sick room, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, something like that. And it's where he becomes sort of so-called modern, mm -hmm. meaning flat. Yes. And everything is not sharply outlined, but, but much more clear in the outline. Mm -hmm. And there's no vibrancy in the in the surfaces, mm -hmm. right? It's just paint, green yes. paint, red paint, whatever. It's more park in a way. Yeah, and you look at it and it's it's like a car that doesn't start. <laughs> no. it, it doesn't doesn't start running, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, so, so I think that that's the basic thing that you have to have to understand. And then we're back to this whole thing about uh, this being modern, modernistic. Uh, mm. I remember this art historian in, in Norwegian radio was saying, talking about, of course, late Titian, mm -hmm. and that it was pre-abstract. It's like, how, well, yeah. where did you get that idea from? It's like, that's very surprising, <laughs> right? It's for an art historian to say something like that. Um, but then, how is that with, that, actually, I'm not sure about Bosnanska there, but, but with Munch, I mean, he sort of, is a bit overstatement, I guess, but started rough, of course, not in the early things, but but uh, I mean, quite early he was yes. extremely rough, and then it just fell apart. Yeah, he goes from it, this, yeah, yeah, clear, I guess, rough to just flat. Yeah, yeah, and I guess that's also <clears throat> why we have uh, uh, Helena Schaufbeck finish. She finish, finish, yeah, right? she's finished. That's, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, not anymore, but no. <laughs> I think she was born um, technically. I think it was Russia where she was born in Finland at the time. So oh, yeah. I, I think yeah, she yeah. has like some connection with Russia okay. as well. But yeah. today it's well, there's uh, a finished. Well, we have a doctor flame on, on the geopolitical <laughs> yes. circumstances. Of That's for age. another time. Like we should. <laughs> and how that influences you as a painter? <laughs> no, but. <laughs> um, uh, so it's not necessarily so that you start, you know, clear, and mm -hmm. then you go to Bosnanska because this mm -hmm. is sort of tipping a bit over. Yes. But, but uh, I mean, I remember Aldo also uh, Aldo introduced me and of course I have introduced others to Scharfbeck mm -hmm. because there is, you know, as I say, something there. Yes. In those late, I don't think that's uh, the best of the late self-portraits. So if you... No, it's yeah, others that's... Because uh, there are some that have mm -hmm. some expression, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, you put that next to Bosnanska again, it's like, okay. Yes, we, we yeah. see it very clearly when you have uh, the comparison. Yeah. When you yeah, look yeah. at them separately, it's like, oh, this well, is pretty good. But if you hold this, them up together, yeah, yeah. should be like, same, same. Can you do both <laughs> at the yeah, same yeah, time? <laughs> so... Um, Maybe the opposite, maybe to see the similar styles, maybe oh, there, yes, oh, oh wait, yeah. Oh, okay, like We can like, <laughs> move it back and forth. Yes, so it's like clearly, for me, which one I, I prefer. Here's Johnny. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> the one behind all the pictures, no. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's clearly yeah. Busnanska. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's very a, obvious It's in a way a him. bit unfair, this comparison, but of course when you say Quite. that it's unfair, it just means that this wins overwhelmingly. You know, yes, that's That's, how, that's the does. unfairness of it. Yes. Um, yeah. But that, that was just amazing. And, and, the and there's a focus in this. Uh, and the hands is just like beyond. And they're not... <laughs> <laughs> they I, I just like awesome, man. Yes, I, I, <laughs> if I could paint one hand like that in my life, I could die happy. You know, it's, like, yeah, yeah. it's gold, gold. But there are others, I mean, <laughs> people should just look up her uh, work online. And this one mm -hmm. we found just before coming in here yes. at <laughs> v Viki... Media. We can, yeah, was it? I, I don't yeah. remember, but uh, maybe yeah. we can even post uh, yeah. the link or something. And this is actually a portrait of, of another painter. Yes. And just the eyes. It's just amazing. And the, it's like, where's the, where's the outline? This is the, that's a typical trap, right? Mm -hmm. Making the yes. eye, and, but this is just, you know, and this is where you, uh, this is an approach that sort of essentially is, uh, in some weird way, 
similar to, to the Florence Academy, like we've been yes. talking about earlier. Thinking of sort of sort of uh, shapes or or sort of strokes mm -hmm. meeting strokes, mm -hmm. as if you don't know what it is in some way. Yes. But of course, you do that just to sort of not get caught up mm -hmm. in all the lines and all the details. Yes. So of course, you add have to add some kind of poetry to that, mm -hmm. not just think here's a square, here's a circle, here's a whatever. Yes. You know? But I think also when you start there, and then but then if you have a clear idea that you want to dissolve it later, I think it's fine. But then you have to remember to look at the overall form of things. Yeah. And I think that's easy to forget when you go too much into details in certain things. Yeah. And here's completely just, it's still very clear, the form. It's very clear where everything starts and ends, yeah. but it's no lines to kind of yeah, yeah. contain it. It's just all flowing out. Yeah, but and like, like the air. Yes. How the air is an uh, uh, you know, integral part of the whole head. Yes. It's not like here's the air, no, here's no. the... I mean, it that, just flows and it's yeah. about light flowing across a form. Yeah. And I think when you do too many shapes and too many lines, you stop the flow of light. And yeah. light will always want to, to travel through the form. And if it yeah. doesn't travel, you have to like stab a hole so it can like bleed somewhere. So you like open it up. <laughs> right, right, right. So, <laughs> This is so like Jack the Ripper stuff. <laughs> yes, it is. I, well, yeah, that <laughs> I mentioned story. It, yes. That story, because yes. it, yeah. Um, no, I didn't know before you told me. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm not I'll, exactly I'll sure if they're at the same time, but and it's not like certain that he is Jack the Ripper either. But everyone's heard of Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Right, and and what he did. Do you know what he did? <laughs> yeah, well, I, that was the. Well, he went after the prostitutes that the English like, prince had been... Maybe that's... Uh, no one really knows, but like yeah. it's still uh, well, unclear. They've never solved it, but it's like a bunch of theories, even like... Uh, yeah, prostitutes involving, being murdered. Yes, involving the royal family. Yeah. Even the prince himself, like yeah. um, second in line to the throne, was yeah. accused uh, in his lifetime yeah. of being Jack the Ripper. Yeah. And uh, since no one was ever caught, they thought yeah. it was like a whole big royal cover-up and all this. Like, it's yeah. all these theories. But then also a theory like falls on this painting um, Walter Sickett. Yeah. Um, and he has painted Jack the Ripper's bedroom. Like they had, uh, he has one painting that's, um, it looks like a dead body. And it's, um, I can't remember exactly the new title, but it originally it was like, how do we pay the rent or something really silly. But it's these women that just lie there like just dead meat, you know. And it's a little bit like, <laughs> a little bit artist school confidential there with like <laughs> the murder of painting these paintings. Um, and he was very cons like obsessed with this, the case of Jack the Ripper. Uh -huh. um, and he it was like in 1988, I think, all the, it was like five murders that was definitely connected. So it was not You're like right, a yeah. lot of them, yeah. all happening in uh, Shoreditch area, Whitechapel. Um, around, yeah, but there. But in 1888, that was... 88, yeah, yeah. so, um, and it's not like, so they're trying to place if Walter Sickert, who is yeah. British, he was Danish or Dutch or something, and he moved to England and became yeah. English. Quite a handsome man, actually. Um, but, um, no, he, he, he has been in England around this, was very in the Camden Town painter group and was very concerned with this Jack the Ripper case who ripped his uh, victims open and <laughs> hence the name, very gr gruesome. Um, and he was never accused in his lifetime and I'm not quite sure if he was there at the time of the murders. Some argues that he was in France at the time where he also spent a lot of time, which is like the connection to Bosnanska who was, I can't remember the name of this art school, but it was this um, school that had very low tuition fees or it was for free um, and it was the only thing that was provided was heat for the models basically mm. and teachers um, and she studied there for a while and he studied there he was teaching there too when she was so she was in and out of this academy mm. so who knows maybe it was Nanska knew Jack the Ripper <laughs> so I, I think that's uh, I think that that's uh, such a beautiful story because it explains why she painted <laughs> There you have it. <laughs> the reason. <laughs> the, but but it's interesting to to think about how why what did what did Bosnanska see and what did uh, young Edward Munch see? Well, we should go we into go into this because hey, find something on Titian uh, there. And it's I, not the best book. It's yeah, funny, but um, and actually, oh yeah. Well, here's that. That's a young one, yes. Well, we did a study trip and, uh, mm -hmm. um, and I uh, talk about this uh, self-portrait. And it's like 22 or something when he did this? Yeah, yeah. He's so 23. young, it's uh, 23, and the, yeah. And then this is actually, sorry, this is actually too sort of colorful. And it's strange when you see it, it's, it's uh, I mean, of course, you, you understand that it's not literally Rembrandt that made it, but mm -hmm. it is has that whole feel. Right? Yes. And then you have that, that uh, speaking of the memorial dogmas, hiding the ears. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, fo- focusing on on and there's no nation label faults either. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only crime here is, is uh, maybe a little bit of blue, but he was uh, he knew how to sort of. Uh, he, he managed to do it without it jumping out too yeah. much. So. But this is extremely manipulated. Mm-hmm. That whole way of of, uh, of working. And you can tell he's worked on it for a long time and like scraped down and, and changed it. And it's it's a very similar thing because it has this vibration to it. It's, it's mm. just dissolving. It's transparent right. in a way. And that's the weird thing because um, uh, so when you have Basnanska, I'm not trying, well, maybe I should. Can I actually hold this over here perhaps? Yeah. Or is no, it light? Is hold it this. Like here or <laughs> together? No, you can hold it, uh, hold hold it, it there. Hold it here. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it, it's the same sort of uh, flattening of forms. Yes. Just look at the, the treatment of hair. Mm-hmm. The treatment, of course, she, she has more of, of, uh, of her body included there, but the whole body is mm-hmm. basically flat. Yes. That's how you learn to you learn to integrate that way of thinking. As you mentioned, your yes. eye works so that I'm, when I look at your mm-hmm. eye now, I can see your hands more as foggy. Yes. But the mistake I must not make is to paint your eye clearly and then look yes. at your fingers and paint them clearly and then look at your knuckle there and then look at the wrist and everything mm-hmm. becomes as clear and the hair and whatever. Yes. So you have to look at the hand and paint it as I see it when I look yeah. at your eye. You have to basically look yeah. at my eye while you paint my hand. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. like what right. you do. Yeah, right. and, and that's what, I mean, so. if you think about what's, ha- what's happening here. Yes. The transition from from the, the neck, the skin mm-hmm. to to the um, what do you call it? The, the color. The, yeah, yeah, the color. That's how you would see that yes, transition. Exactly. Right? If I look at the transition mm-hmm. between your uh, um, blouse and skin, when I'm looking at you, that's what I would see. Yes. And that's what she does also with the exactly with it. Well, that, actually, that's a chair she's sitting in. Yes, there's a chair. Like everything is there. It's it's like, yeah. and you get the sensation she's sitting in a chair in a room, yeah. but you don't even see it right away yeah. because you get so drawn. The focus is so extremely strong. Yeah. And then you go to her hands, you know, and then yeah. maybe you have time to discover the rest because you you can't stop looking at this these eyes. But that that's a really uh, you're sort of balancing on a knife's edge mm-hmm. doing that. <laughs> yes. Uh, because you know, have to know what you're doing. I, I've seen that this, mm. you know, uh, when all really got interested in, in the, or really focused on latition. Yes. And th- there were some students then who felt that because, you know, they were like 30 years younger, mm-hmm. so they had a 30 year advance yeah, on to, to get there. developing <laughs> it as a painter. Yes. And that, that's like, oh God, come on. <laughs> I have an iPhone 11, therefore I will be a better painter than you. You only have an iPhone 7. Yes, it's it's yeah, the same no, kind of logic. But I mean, yeah. the, the point is that, uh, well, I don't know what happens. Is it? But one is really interesting though with Munch. Uh, it's a sick you child. Sh- you want to show something? Uh, no, but it's like the earlier. It's, I have some white white paper things there. Fine. So let's see. What's interesting? And, and Munch, is, he has this very short period of like maybe 10 years where he paints his very best paintings, which yes. is in his 20s to early 30s. Yes. Which is like really maybe, crazy. Yes. Well, that's self portable. The secret is when he's 32 or something. Yeah, like, it was 35 or something. 95. It's kind of, that's one of the last ones that yeah, yeah. I really love that he's yeah. doing. But what's interesting? Okay, so he paints this. Can I just take this out? Maybe yeah, yeah. I'll put it back later. But then you have this painting, which is just. It's, it's, I, I have no words, you know, it's just fantastic. Mm. It's like the, the sick child. And that doesn't reproduce well here. Just no, to, no, you have to see this yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the flesh, basically. Yeah, yeah. And this he paints, is, is, is it 22 when he paints this? Uh, that's 23. Yeah, it's well, it's like the <laughs> same, 86. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and he, he paints this and it's completely dissolved. Yeah. You know, it is just like amazing. And when you look at it, it it's so focused. It's like nothing else has, you understand it's a room, it's a bed and all this, yeah. but it, it's not important. You always go here and you go to this child yeah. and it's just completely dissolved and yeah. just so beautifully done. And then what's interesting, because this comes later and this is like backwards, I think, because this one he paints because I think he wanted a scholarship to go to Paris. Yeah, so he had to be academic. And this is the exactly yeah, yeah. same thing. And mm. this one, it does, it's not as striking for some reason. It's, it's well done. No, no doubt about well, it. But you have that. But like the flowers are more important than the, the figures. Yeah, or as important. <laughs> yeah, you so know, these sharp edges. Like it's so many things. You know, a painting is not a democratic business. No. <laughs> you, you cannot be a Democrat. Uh, I mean, like democratically minded right. when, you, when you paint. I mean, look at this. This. <laughs> Where is it? I'm just so in front. Yes. Yeah, 
this here, and then you have this, and then mm. you have this line here, and, and like you the have wind the coming outline in the of the figures here, and the apple here, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, okay. So this painting would have been much better as well if he had more focus. He should yeah. have really chopped it half, you know, in the middle. Yeah, but he could have made it. He could have made it better. Something like yes. the sick child. And like only this is important. So yeah. why all this other yeah. stuff? Because he knows that they need interiors and there has to be 1886. Yes. And like show, uh, yeah. show off the skill, like yeah, how yeah, well you can yeah. draw and well, carve I mean, things out, is it? That's also interesting if you look at then uh, Picasso. Mm -hmm. And he pa painted these sick children too. I mean, there were how many thousands <laughs> of sick children were there? Uh, and, <laughs> oh, and uh, you know, it's academic and all these things. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine, I guess. Um, but uh, but um, he has no clue of you know, the painterliness or the, 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 the need to tell a story. Mm. Yeah, but like, what's that, the reason of painting it in the first place? What does he want yeah, to achieve yeah, yeah. by doing it? Yeah, and I think that's where you come back to, mm -hmm. you know, starting and, well, this, I guess, this is sort of more exact. Yes. Um, but, and you need that as a basis, but that alone is not enough. No. If you don't have some, you know, something that you, some mm -hmm. story that you have to tell, yes, uh, or that that you some desire that you that you want to want to bring across, uh, because I've been thinking about, for example, you have um, uh, Pierre Bonnard. Mm -hmm. We don't have him here no, now. No. <laughs> um, and he's what you would think of immediately as, as sort of modern painter, mm -hmm. Mozart, not modernist because it's not abstract, but. Well, the beginning of the, the end, no? <laughs> yeah, but it was so strange because I saw an exhibition in Rome. Mm. Uh, and that was uh, 15 years ago, perhaps. Matisse and Bonnard. Okay. And that was interesting. <laughs> okay. Because suddenly, you know, of course, we're talking about the best works of, mm. of Bonnard that have, I would argue, really quite strong mm. similarities with Bosnanska. Yes. There is a, a, a sentimentality there. There is a painfulness. There is mm -hmm. a there's a joy there. Uh, there there's Something this vibrating quality to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the really good ones are just mm -hmm. striking. Yes. Um, but uh, and then when you compare, com I could compare him with Matisse. Yes. And that was like you know comparing an old master mm -hmm. and a psychopath. You know Matisse <laughs> oh, because a psychopath doesn't really look what he's looking at. Mm -hmm. But that's, yeah, just you know, like Just how can recording. I use this to my advantage somehow? But, yes. but um, um, Bonnard has this, uh, you know, great empathy mm -hmm. and love for what he sees. That little dog on the, mm -hmm. I said, on a chair or whatever, mm -hmm. or an ear that just glows, mm -hmm. you know, with how this... And it's, it's kind of naive. Yes. But that, that love for it and that, mm -hmm. that uh, drive for it mm -hmm. keeps it... Going, you know? Yes, yes, but that's what and gives it. I, but so I, can, I can sound a bit strange because if you just love it enough, then it doesn't matter if, how it's painted. That's not what I'm saying. But it, I mean, it's. But that's a whole different thing. You need to love yeah. your subject, like what you're yeah. going to depict as well. Because yeah. if you're not in love with your subject matter, or you yeah. have a clear vision of what you want to do, what's the point of doing it? Yeah. And even though if you love to paint, well, if if you just paint mechanically and not think about it, what what's then the point of it except a, a nice hobby to relax? You know. <laughs> yeah, and th yeah. Then we're getting back to our conversation uh, on the Florence Academy. Your experience there, mm -hmm. learning a lot, but when the point become be when the technique, the, the execution of the technique becomes like a moral mm -hmm. or a duty or whatever, yes. then it, then it becomes. Um, not joyful. Right? No, but I think that's a problem in a lot of um, painting institutions today. It's so focused on technique that you forget about the, the philosophy, why, why you're doing it or, or thinking about uh, just life, you know, because that, that's what you want to do when you're a figurative, yeah. like classical painter. You want to make yeah. something that's convincing, that you believe in. Uh, and if you just look at the, the exterior, the empty shapes, it's like an empty shell and it's no life there. Yeah. And then what, what was the point then? What, what are you striving to get? Yeah. Thank you for checking out this clip from the Cave of Apelles. If you want to watch the entire segment, head over to caveofapelles.com slash donate and become a $5 patron. That will allow you to access all our Dark Flame episodes, bonus material with our featured guests and more.